here's part two. Uh, if you've watched part one, this will probably make more sense, but uh, I'm glad you're with us anyway, so enjoy. Indicator nymphing. Now the indicator originally started off as what's known as the duo method, where you'd, uh, you weren't sure whether you wanted to fish nymph or dry fly. So you put both on basically, you put a dry fly on the dropper, maybe two or three feet up from the tail, the point fly, which would be a nymph. The nymph would sink, the dry fly would float, and your indication of a take would be either a trout coming up from the dry fly itself, which is pretty obvious uh, when the, there's a splash and the fly disappears from the top of the water, or else, more subtly, you see the dry fly shuffling across the surface or being dragged under, which is a sign, again, your nymph's either stuck on an obstruction or else a fish has taken it. Now that's developed, the indicators, uh, I think in the 80s, they started bringing out a thing called glow putty, which was a little sort of pinch of sort of fluorescent orange stuff that you'd pinch around a, a knot on the leader or a dropper point. And you could see this floating along the top and then see it abruptly disappear when a fish took the nymph. That sort of evolved into things that, well, I can only really call them floats. Um, huge indicators, maybe an inch or more in diameter, like sort of pike bobs, really, that uh, are placed at some point on the leader above the, the nymph. And it's basically... Well, I would have said it's trotting, really, <laughs> with a float, which I do enjoy, don't get me wrong, but is it fly fishing? Squirmy Wormy next. <laughs> Something I've had a little bit of fun with in the last uh, video. It got me uh, the odd fish or two when the, the water was quite coloured, uh, much as I would have done if I was fishing a real worm. But I fished it on fly tackle again with my sort of droop floating line technique of it, uh, the indication, which worked pretty well actually. Um, but again, uh, <laughs> it's um, if you make a, 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 your own squirmy wormy like I did, uh, is it fly tying? Um, well, it's not really a fly, is it? It's, it's more of a sort of a, a, a jiggler, really. And um, the actual fishing, again, if you're not really using the fly line to propel it, because it does have a tungsten bead in to, to make it, to uh, give it its own casting weight. So again, squirmy wormy. Sorry, I'm, uh, I can't really positively confirm that that's fly fishing at all. Squirmy wormy. Are you telling me that this seriously is a fly? <laughs> My next invention is going to be a squirmy red maggot, so what's the view about that one? And a lost art, the traditional um, Scottish and Irish dapping, um, which uh, in Ireland it's sort of a brown trout uh, method on the huge um, windswept um, locks of the, the west of Ireland, uh, notably like Corrib and Mask. And in Scotland, some of the, the classic uh, sea trout locks like Hope and Stack, um, some of the uh, lock bar on Mull, one uh, I can think of, um, it was basically designed for fishing from a drifting boat, uh, a great big long rod, maybe up to 15 feet long, uh, with a floss line that sort of blows in the wind and uh, a cast on the end of that or leader with uh, very very bushy flies that sort of caught the wind basically and you'd, you'd basically just pay out line with the rod almost vertical or, or pretty well vertical let that uh, that wind carry the flies over the over the lock uh, like a kite basically and then drop the rod down so the flies sort of drop in turn and dance across the waves you do need quite a good blow for it but it can provide some very exciting sport as the trout and sea trout and quite often salmon will come and swipe at these flies and try and knock them off the top of the waves um, something I quite fancy having a go at actually but uh, I don't think I could be um, I don't think I'd be going to the trouble of buying all the tackle. 
Uh, so dapping, um, I'm classing that as fly fishing because fly fishing you're using the fly line uh, to actually deliver the flies into the, the fishing zone. So that's gets, that gets a thumbs up, traditional dapping. Yeah, we'll have that. And then there's fly and maggot. Um, this traditional Cumbrian and Welsh uh, night fishing sea trout fly fishing method where if you had a river with very slow pools uh, very sort of sluggish canal like pools and it was difficult to make the fly work with any action in the night you'd put a couple of maggots on the hoop and um, maybe a sinking line fish it quite deep and very slowly and the action of the maggots wriggling and I'm sure the smell would uh, attract the fish, the sea trout, uh, into taking them. I've done it myself and it, it is strange, you've got to cast very carefully because otherwise the maggots fly off on the back cast and it's a queer feeling, you don't get that savage uh, take like a streamer lure, you just get a sort of gentle pull, uh, pretty well like a roach mouthing the, uh, the maggot really. Who cares if it can if it conforms with club rules? Um, who's to say any of these shouldn't be classed as fly fishing? But I don't know. I do wonder. And then more recently, there's tenkara, traditional uh, Japanese method. Um, I suppose it's the fly fishing equivalent of the coarse fishing pole or whip, uh, where you've no actual reel. The line is just uh, attached to the end of the rod, probably roughly the the length of the rod and um, your fly is sort of flicked out off this longish rod um, again with no actual fly line as we understand it so I'm not sure about that one either quite an interesting section on the fly and maggot in the Hugh Volkus classic sea trout fishing book if you'd uh, care to read it um, uh, quite well the whole of the books absolute uh, sort of bible for sea trout anglers really and very interesting reading even if you don't um, but yeah quite a good section on the using the flying maggot in that bubble float and bomb or bombarda no i don't know how anybody can describe this as fly fishing uh, a fly might be used as a lure uh, below the floor, but it's fixed off a quite heavy spinning rod and fixed spool reel. Uh, very effective. Uh, a lot of Scottish saltwater anglers use it for sea trout. Um, I suppose it, it could be used for bass, although I'm not aware of it uh, being used for that. Maybe somebody can correct me on that one. Um, but no way it's fly fishing. <laughs> um, Tremendous range achievable. I mean, you can probably cast up to 70 yards with it, which uh, puts it way out of range of any, even the most competent fly fishers. But not fly fishing, sorry. Well, uh, that's the end of my little rant and uh, rave about all these borderline fly fishing techniques, which uh, I'm quite a hypocrite because <laughs> I use them myself. But uh, something to think about. Uh, back to the fishing next time. I've got some cracking footage of a uh, dry fly session um, where the fish have suddenly come to life on one of my local rivers. So uh, be sure to subscribe and watch out for that one coming up. Uh, if I get a chance, maybe next week and I'll finish the, the editing. Okay, all the best. Take care.